Welcome back, everyone. And today we're going to do another follow-up to our previous lesson, which is about um, intersection with triangles. Um, there's like a problem with something I said in the last video that I kind of realized is partly false. And I kind of just want to go through a couple of extra little things. So in the previous lesson, I gave you a bunch of large code that had a lot of visualization. So this time around, I'm giving you everything more cleaned up without any visual really any much visualization done. So like here's the algorithm of determining if um, the intersection exists on the plane that the triangle or any plane in general. Uh, you know, like I said, a plane is defined by a position and um, a direction. So if we pass in the start of our and the end of our array, we pass in our normal, which is the, the direction and our plane uh, position, this will then calculate if it's in the plane or not and it gives you back the intersection point. Then we have two algorithms in the previous lesson that we uh, talked about how to do triangles. In Polygon allows us to do um, a test of intersection within a triangle, but it, it's really a polygon. You can actually do four sides, five sides, six sides. As long as the shape is uh, concaved, um, you're perfectly fine. As long as it doesn't, like, I forget what the term is, I think it's unconcaved or whatever but um as long as it's like a nice shape it doesn't bend inward uh like a hexagon octagon you know things like that uh, infinite number of um sides as long as nothing caves into itself so that's what the in polygon can do and it's a simple algorithm it's a very fairly simple algorithm algorithm to do um it's not very very complicated um the first the first part is really uh, in plane uh, functionality. So really the algorithm is all this. Um, very simple to implement. Uh, go to GitHub to get the final code. And then we have the in triangle one where I said originally that, because of the way I have read one place was that you only need to check two sides uh, f for confirmation. And then when I started cleaning up the code and getting everything neatly, I start to realize there's a problem, and you actually do have to check all three sides. Um, when comparing the two algorithms, uh, the barycentric bar 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 and then in polygon, I automatically thought this was going to be the slightly better one, but once it's been implemented, it actually, I think it's worse. There's a lot more going on for implementation than the in polygon one. So like code wise, I would think in polygon, the polygon algorithm is probably slightly better. Uh, it's simpler. Uh, it's kind of straight to the point. And you can do multiple sides where this one only does um, three sides. Um, but this follow up is really about there's all the two, two more algorithms we can explore. The molar uh, Trombor algorithm, and then there's another one uh, that doesn't necessarily have a name, uh, but we'll go through it. You know, we'll, I'll show it to you really quickly. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the code that we that I, I've cleaned up a little bit. You know, we have the in plane. You know, uh, like I said, it's very simple, and if it's successful, we draw a point. Else, we say there's no intersection. So if I go here, refresh. everything gets a nice point. That's because it's within um, that plane. But if I decide to move forward and have the ray backwards, now I get no intersection. So, because it's not going toward the that plane that exists for this triangle. So, like I said, same thing happens with uh, the polygon edge testing. Refresh. Again, it keeps telling me no intersection. And now it draws the points when the points are actually in the triangle, like bound by the triangle and interception. Intersection. So this is so like I said, if you go to GitHub, you find the cleaned up code from the previous lesson. So it's nice and simple, like uh, ready to use uh, for your projects. And then we're going to go and look at this one.
This one, I still kept the visualization code in there, just two lines of code, just so I, so I can see what the problem was. So refresh. So if I click here, you know, if you remember correctly, it kind of does a test from a corner to the opposite uh, edge. And then it does um, a projection to see where I click on, does it exist somewhere on this line? So as you can see, when I um, do a projection, the projection point is over here. It's like nowhere on this line. So that means it's not within the bounds. If I were to click here, it, it look, by the looks of it, it actually has to test all three edges based on the point of existence. If I go here, it still has to do all of them. If I go here, it still has to do all of them. Uh, if I point here, it has to test two sides. And if I refresh again, if I test below, it has to do three sides. So and on a previous video, I like I said, I, this algorithm, you only need to check two sides, but in practice, I noticed that I was not getting points and I started drawing these lines to prove that I actually do need to check three sides. So, so yeah, here I need to check one, apparently, or no, two. Over here, I only have to check once. And over here, I have to check three times. I guess it depends. <laughs> depends where you are. Like, like literally, where you're pointing can change uh, the testing, but it looks like to get a, uh, a verified proof that you are, oops, in there. Oh, and buffer size. So I filled up my uh, visual buffer. Um, so you, yeah, you really have to check all three sides using uh, the barycentric algorithm to to confirm that your points are inside the triangle. Now. The main well, here's the main reason why I'm making this uh, this video. There's there's when you go research triangle intersections, there's tons of algorithms. There's there's actually there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Like in the previous lesson, we went through two simple ones. Um, uh, there's the molar trombor algorithm. Um, scratch pic, scratch of has a nice big article that explains all the mathematics behind it. Gives you some quick illustrations. To understand how it works and uh you know how yeah literally all the math and i usually have problems reading these things because sometimes i start getting confused with what the letters mean um but then uh but they're nice enough to uh supply different kind of examples of how to um implement it um they implement it like more i guess the unclean way and then they kind of and by by the end they give you a perfect optimized version of it for like speed and everything else which is great so you kind of learn a, a little bit of math tricks here and there of how to optimize things so if you're really interested in this algorithm um if you scroll to the bottom i'll have a link under the description for this you know you can this this is not you know there's no loops no nothing this thing does a whole triangle uh, looks like it does a might do a pretty good job of doing an intersection. Um, so, and there's also one algor algorithm you can. Uh, they also mentioned here, but other people also mention it as well. Uh, something called the efficient ray polygon intersection. No, no, it's not this one. I, th I think it is that one. So yeah, you did have a reference to it. Uh, if you go, and I did find the link for it, and apparently this this article, or this document, um, if you look online, it's usually considered the most efficient uh, intersection or triangle algorithm you can probably get uh, in terms of speed and optimization. So it's a, it's a four-page document um, that describes everything uh, related to how to do this. But at the very end, it gives you pseudocode. Um, ooh. so if you want to implement it yourself you, know, you can read the whole document to try to understand the mathematics or you can just scroll to the bottom and just look at the pseudocode and just implement it in JavaScript if you really want to try it out um, to, by the looks of it to me it's a lot of um, vector lengths you know it's just taking a bunch of points 
and subtracting them. And then you do a bunch of compares. And then uh, based on the different compares, uh, comparisons, you kind of just set uh, an A value. And then that final angle value, whatever it is, you know, I, I haven't really gone through it to really understand this um, because I'm really, really don't need triangle intersections with the stuff we're going to be doing in, in the future um, unless we're going to do very complicated uh, things. Uh, very complicated intersections within a mesh, then we might need it, but we're not going to do it because for the most part, what we need when in terms of game development is that we just need really bind, bounding boxes, spheres, and capsules. Uh, those are the, really the three things that we need when we're, if you're dealing with game development, because especially when it comes to collisions, uh, those are the three main shapes. So you really don't need um, triangle intersections. But I really want to, to explore triangle intersections simply because you learn a lot of the math behind it. It's the basics of intersections. Um, you learn about projections. You learn about uh, how to get uh, the plane uh, of where uh, your ray kind of p passes through. Um, it's very important to learn how to do some triangle. As long as you get one or two algorithms um, like under your belt of understanding, other things that come down the line that's more three-dimensional makes it easier to understand, like projections. Like uh, if I didn't understand how to do projections, learning um, how to do plane, and triangle intersections, um, doing quads would have been a little bit harder, and then doing, doing bonding boxes would be a lot more difficult. Uh, I, I, already, I already have uh, quads, uh, circles, and uh, bounding boxes done. Um, I'm working on spheres and um, oriented bounding boxes next. So I got, I'm, I'm kind of behind making these videos. Uh, I'm code-wise, I'm ahead. So, but like I said, I really wanted to make this video to kind of just fix a, a, a thing I said in the last video. And I really want to introduce you that there's more algorithms. And if you're looking for an actual triangle algorithm uh, interception, try this pseudocode, write it in JavaScript, uh, see how well it works. Write some visualiz visualization code to see where, where all the lines connect. So you kind of have an, a picture in your head of how all the math works. Um, it really helps. Like that's how I learn. That's how I'm learning. That's how I'm guys. I'm doing with the videos, trying to do some visualization of the math, so you can kind of see what's really happening. Um, so yeah, that's the the, the gist of it. Uh, if any of you, one of you, decide to implement any of these two algorithms in JavaScript using fungi, uh, please um, t show it to me. Um, and uh, you know, I'll look at through it, and maybe I'll make us another follow-up uh, video uh, for triangle intersections, showing uh, your work, and um, I'll explain the math as best as I understand it to everyone else. So, if you guys want to implement it, please give it a shot. Um, like, if you guys really want it as a challenge, or you guys just need to do triangle intersections, uh, try implementing these two different algorithms, uh, and uh, and see how well it works for you. So that'd be it. Um, like, subscribe, uh, got any questions, ask away. Um, so next video, we're going to deal with uh, intersection with quads and circles because if you're dealing with um, like in, uh, UIs, uh, especially if you're going to put a UI within a 3D environment, you really want to intersect a quad or a circle because you know, might have round buttons, you're going to have rectangle button buttons. So if you can shoot a ray and then find which button you clicked on, uh, very important. So that uh, and and the quad uh, intersections are similar to triangle intersections, and circles are um, much more simpler than that. Um, so we'll, next video will definitely be about that. So uh, see you guys in the next video.